Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing financial crime and compliance. With us today is Scott Sammy and Simon Richardson. So one of the things we hear often, um, institutions say we want to engage in transformational technology. Mm -hmm. um, and they often point at things like, oh, I have too many false positives, or yeah. we're moving away from a rule-based approach to uh, more of a graph analytics yeah. approach. How do institutions choose the correct type of transformational technology in order to optimize their compliance operations? To me, the best way to do that is essentially do data studies. For, from, from, from what I've seen, how do you understand you know, the key thing to all of this is the data and the quality of the data you've got. For sure. um, and that is understanding what data you've got and how it describes the risks. Because then you can understand the type of analytical techniques you can actually apply. So whether it's a graph database, whether it's you need to do some RPA to bring data together, whether it's IPA on top of that to make decisions. I think that's the key thing. How do you actually understand the problem? So robotic process automation yeah. and... IPA. And IP is the intelligent process, so a level of analytics on top. So, and I think that's the, the key thing. How do, you, how do you bring your data and understand your data to actually apply those techniques? Because it might be you don't need RPA if you can bring all the data together in a, in a data lake to start with. Right. So how do you actually best architect things and get the best results out? Um, that's very key, to, key for me is essentially take a product, as we touched on trade finance, how do you understand that flow of a trade finance transaction? And at what point do the risks actually mm -hmm. occur? What type of data is available at those, those points in time? And therefore, what type of techniques do you need to run to actually understand the risk? And I think there's a great opportunity to learn from examples of good practice that are already out there uh, in the industry. So although applying some of these technologies to the compliance process is still a, a, at a fairly young stage, mm. there are some great examples out there of how firms have been able to uh, take uh, machine learning algorithms, for example, uh, apply those to uh, historic uh, investigation decisions that they've made and use those to predict future outcomes. And they've been able to use those kinds of insights to cut uh, their financial crime alert volumes by 30, 40 percent or more. Uh, so uh, some great examples of real business value that's being delivered today. Uh, and I think that can be key in uh, helping drive adoption uh, within an organisation because you need to be able to visualise the benefit you're getting out of this at the end of the process. Uh, and having some tangible examples uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of these use cases that work, uh, uh, I think really helps people understand how, how the technology can bring value. Yeah. I think there's also a point there around, as you touched on some, about the payback. How can you show how the benefit from, from doing one piece of work can actually be used and invested in the next piece of work? So you've got a roadmap that shows over time how technology is going to help you to you know, reduce the overhead costs in terms of operational costs, but also increase the risk coverage and make yourself more, you know, make the organisation more effective. Scott, Simon, thank you both very much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, financial crime and compliance, it's a topic the PwC and Oracle have been working on for quite some time. We look forward to talking to you about it. Thank you very much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.